Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Expressor here in S3. And I mentioned to you this uh, earlier, of course, relationships. We're going to chat about that today. And we're going to go in depth with regard to all of the conversations. So make sure you stand by for that. Grab a cup of something comforting. Now, communication is the foundation to any healthy relationship. We know that. We chat about that all the time. But if you want to strengthen your relationship, then it's important for both of you to feel safe and comfortable enough to share what's happening in your world. Often... There are, oh, there's hiding, there are things that you can't share, there's, there's a bit of pride, there's a bit of worry, but here to chat more about sharing in a relationship is Blythe Brigg and Christiane Irene from Arise Wellness Centre to unpack this key topic that Graham and I are about to delve into. So, we shall we? We share everything, guys. Yes, we do. You've got to know that about this relationship. Every, we, everything. Absolutely everything. You added quite a lot of gravitas with that intro. Well, like, I had to because... Holding towards something. Ooh. It's going to be big. Because it speaks to vulnerability. Uh, and we're going to flip the script a little bit. I, we all want to know, but also do we want to tell? And maybe there's something in that. As the person who's being expected to open up and share, maybe, Blythe, we can start with, with you. Why is it so important that we do start on that basis of communication? Why is that flow of information so important? So just like you said, vulnerability. In a, in a relationship, you need to be vulnerable so that you can, you can receive the res support that you are expecting and that you need. And unless you have that communication, unless you share what you, your thoughts and desires and needs and all of your aspirations, your loved one is not going to know what you need. Um, there's a very different, a different way of, of dealing with that in terms of different love languages. And yeah. it's important to know what your partner's love language is so that you can talk to them in their language. I love that because you, you, you kind of tap out, you say, I'm not getting what I need. Have yeah. you asked for what you need? Yeah. Have you made it clear in a way that, you know, the, the, the two of you can actually delve into that? I love that. Well, let's go to love languages, Christy, and let's uh, go for an active service. Okay. I'd like for you to serve us with the information <laughs> provided with regard to challenges and barriers to sharing in a relationship because mm. it sounds easy. You're with somebody because you love them. Share what's the problem, but so there there are a lot of barriers and challenges that I think that not, not everybody actually highlights. So please give us a, a few that come to mind. Absolutely, I love that you actually highlight love languages straight off the bat. Yeah, that is one of the many challenges. Somebody once explained to me it's like speaking different languages. Yes, yeah. I'm sitting on this couch and I'm speaking French. You're sitting on that chair and you're speaking German. Oh, my word, can what you imagine I? how well that conversation could go? Yes, exactly. If we're in a relationship, and truly, I am an act of service, it would be difficult if somebody is, for sakes, not on the same act of service yes. that I am. I'm cooking meals, I'm going out of my way, and this love language is actually not resonating with them. They are not, fulfill not yeah. fulfilled by what I'm doing and I'm not being fulfilled because they're not acknowledging what I'm putting into this relationship, simply because, well, I'm speaking French okay. and they understand German. Okay. If we look at these challenges even closely, we see the challenges within intimacy, we see the challenges within actually being able to be honest and able to open up in no matter what language we really are speaking in. We also go into honesty there as well. So thank you for bringing that question up. I, I absolutely do love that. It, it hits me that you can walk through your entire relationship yeah. doing exactly this, speaking two different languages, yeah. creating these kind of expectations that your partner knows nothing about, and then when that's not met, it's a negative reinforcement. There we you go. Going through the cycle over and over again. How do we then approach this from a positive perspective, i.e. keeping our independence, because I think that is vitally yeah. important for the sense of well-being, but also have that connection of being able to share what we feel safe to share. How do we find that balance? What's yeah. the first step, maybe? I know maybe that's a life's journey to Definitely. achieve it, but, yeah. but where do we begin? So that's an incredibly important point. Autonomy in a relationship is, is a must. It is, it is something that a lot of people feel like you need to be in a relationship because that person makes you happy. Being in a relationship is about being both individually happy and still choosing to be together. Mm. You're supposed to have individual hobbies. You're supposed to be able to go about your day individually, but have that want, that, that love for the other person to share with them. And that's where the difference comes in. It's either, you know, that codependency, I need this person to be happy, I need this person to be with me Balance all the time. Me out, yeah. Or it's I'm my own individual person and I love this own individual person next to me as well fully and to their fullest extent. 
Well, to go back to what you mentioned earlier, Christiane, with regard to active service and, and the communication, obviously there are varying levels of active service, which means that even though you could actually share a love language, there are different versions and interpretations and execution of said love language. So why is it so difficult for couples to say, you are not fulfilling my needs? Because why is it that they want to choose peace mm. to not actually engage in that conversation yeah. in order to say, like, I would like a different version? I mean, you are cooking me meals, but that's not fulfilling my acts of service. Exactly. And now suddenly me bringing that up would make me seem ungrateful. Or judgmental. And, or, and yeah. yes, and disrespectful of the hard time that you are spending in the kitchen <laughs> cooking. Exactly. So I'd like to just touch on that for a second. How do you break that barrier in a relationship to go into that topic? This is something that I often have to bring up with my clients is big talks. Yes. Big talks, aha. Yeah. <laughs> Having big emotions means we have to have big talks. Okay. Yeah. If you are going about feeling disappointed because you are working in a love language that you believe your partner is resonating with, but it is actually not fulfilling either of you the way you want it yeah. to, that disappointment is a big emotion. Mm. If you're going to scurl it away, you are never going to actually uncover what could be a very helpful conversation. Let's bring it up yeah. in a very safe, a very understandable way that we can both put our views on the table, big talk, tabletop talk, and let us understand them, find compromises within our views, find ways to work with our views in order to actually process this disappointment, this emotion, and move beyond it, finding those compromises to actually fulfill those needs. I, I love that, because I think if you get to a point where you can have these big talks with a set standard of parameters, yeah. where it helps you to control the reactionary stuff, when you know, okay, it's time for one of those talks, we're gonna check our baggage at the door for the next 20 minutes, mm -hmm. we take a step back and we present our case, and we, well, that sounds a bit combative, we present our case. <laughs> That sounds a little bit too much, maybe. We, well, well, we make our pitch. Um, but no, I lo yeah. absolutely love that, yeah. I think I'm loving this conversation. I actually want a part two, and we have that for you. So 68 if you've got any questions for our panel, please feel free. We'd love to ask them anything that you may have with regard to the topic as Ewan is standing by. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beauties. Thank you so much for rejoining what has been a very enriching and deeply personal conversation, and hopefully the same can be said for you. We've got some superstars on the couch, Blythe Brigg and Christiane Irene from the amazing Arise Wellness Centre. They're back with us to continue to discuss sharing in relationships and what that looks like. Every relationship is completely unique. Every person is completely different. We know that people come together for very different reasons, with different makeups, and part of what defines a healthy relationship is starting a common goal for exactly what you want that relationship to be and where you want it to go, at yeah. least the true north. You don't have to just immediately get there. That's something you'll only know by having a big talk, as we now know. You need to get there. You need to be honest, vulnerable, and go a little deeper, man. I like big talks. Yeah, man. Can I do a big talk right now? Yes, With I'm ready. Life. Check my baggage. All right, I'm ready. yes, yes. I'm ready. Here's the big talk, and I think that they say sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. But what is in the sharing. Oh. In a romantic relationship, what are the things that should be shared? And is it everything? Are some things still okay to be private when you are in a romantic relationship with something? Uh, someone, of course, I wanna know about the balance there because I know it's very, very difficult. But I'm talking about passwords and you're talking about DMs and your phone being open on the kitchen counter. Does this mean different and things? All those things. Yeah, yes, exactly, so I'd, I'd just like to know and I know this is a very hard one. I'm sorry, Blythe. <laughs> you looked at me and I looked at you and I was like, you are the best person to You looked at me for a moment. Yeah, I, I looked, looked at you as well. Again. <laughs> Thoughts on that? You know, are there things that you can still keep private in a romantic relationship? Absolutely. It's, like you say, completely dependent on the person. Yeah. And that's where these big talks come from. For, for, for example, everyone has their own interpersonal relationships with your best friend, with your family members, with all sorts of people in your life. You don't have to share every intimate situation with them you don't have to tell your partner every secret about you and your best friend you also if you've got past trauma and that's something you don't feel comfortable bringing up or talking about yes it should be in a relationship that you feel comfortable about but there are certain traumas that are triggering to even talk about mm. and sometimes triggering for even knowing that someone else knows about them 
So in those situations, you know, that's where the trust comes in. You've got to trust that your partner is telling you everything you need to know about them, but also realize that you don't have to know absolutely every single detail because if your cup's already full, how is it going to get yeah. any fuller? How are you going to learn to love them more? How are you going to find out more interesting things about them throughout the rest of your life? Yeah. It must be a choice. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean from my perspective, I've come to terms with my life, my history, my past, and everyone has the right to at least own their own baggage from that perspective. So don't tell me what you need to know about me yeah. Yeah. to form an opinion. Yes, that's one side of things. I also trust that my wife is going to make decisions on my behalf in certain elements that are far better than I could make. And that's how we have helped each other a lot. Because she has personality traits that are non-existent <laughs> me and otherwise. But it took a lot of vulnerability and some pretty hectic stuff to get us to that point. Can we avoid that? Can we premise a relationship with a conversation, a big talk before we even get going so that we know what those expectations are? Amazingly, that's quite the challenge. Mm. In a world where we have Tinder, in a world where we have dating apps, what are you actually going into a relationship needing? What's yeah. the expectation? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. The expectation here is the biggest point behind it all. Going into a relationship, having the expectation that it's a hookup, well, please do not share your life story. Your <laughs> password should probably not come up in <laughs> conversation. <laughs> However, if this is somebody who you've been with, you're committed to, yeah. that trust is present. Share. Be able to trust that person. Yeah. Your password is a completely Different personal yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. However, to be able to have conversations, these big talks, and be able to be vulnerable with yeah. one another, to say why your password is private to yeah. you. So you know what, actually, this is a personal matter. Well, give me your and journal, can, can I read your journal? we respect each yeah, other's personal yeah. matters. Oh. To have that conversation when we know what the expectations of the relationship are, puts a premise into what those conversations are going towards. Yeah. We are talking about our future when we're talking about today. Yeah, for sure. And that is truly what happens when we have that vulnerability, that intimacy, and the ability to share. And that's because it is. Your future is a state of being lived now. The future doesn't exist. Yeah. So whatever that notion is, it's not a reality. It's just something that informs how you are acting right, right now. now. And if that is toxic, then there's an issue. I love that. Oh. Thinking about doing it. We have, we have more to discuss. In fact, hold on, I want a part three. Can we do it? Let's do a part three. I, I feel like I'll it's back important. You, eh? Okay, thank you. Because I want to actually do discuss it. some of the red flags in a relationship with regard to the sharing concept. So make sure that you got your question ready if you'd like to. A voice that's fine, 068 uh, 408863, of course. And make sure that you actually ask these questions as well. We've got Blythe, we've got Christiane, we've got Graham. We've got this panel ready for you. So if you have any questions, that number, once again, 063-408-8863. We are ready for your questions. Is that your password as well? It is indeed. <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It's your feel good breakfast show expresso here on S3. If you uh, missed out on our last couple of chats, it's all been about relationships. Now, uh, Blythe Brig and Christiane, Irene from Arise Wellness Center are back with us as we wrap up our conversation on sharing in relationships. It sounds pretty simple, but many couples find that the face-to-face -face contact of their early dating days is uh, gradually replaced by hurried texts and emails and instant messages, and I'll get to that later, baby. While digital communication is great for some purposes, it doesn't positively impact your brain and nervous system in the same way as face-to-face -face communication does, because that really does show a lot of intimacy and, of course, affection when it needs to. But I was chatting a little earlier to, to Graham and our panel around red flags mm. in a relationship. When you think something is up and you need to have a big talk, Blythe, once again, I'm gonna throw you this curveball. my apologies, <laughs> but I have to. Uh, a red flag with regard to the sharing, you know, when you feel like there's a problem with regard to the sharing or where you need to start actually opening a conversation to share, what would you say would be some of the red flags? Just to look out for, as a matter of assistance to any viewer now watching this conversation and is stuck in a situation where they're thinking, what's going on, what's happening? Yeah, so red flags are, are personal. They, they come from our past traumas yeah. that we recognize. So first thing you've got to recognize is, is this a red flag? Red, is yeah. this a red flag or is this something that I am bringing from my past and putting on oh, you? Yeah. yeah, and that's something that you, that, you know, you will, 
you have to know your partner. So is this something that they're suddenly changing? Are they suddenly doing something different? Or is this something that you're just suddenly now noticing for the first time? And that's where the communication comes in, being confident and comfortable to have that conversation with them and not, not accusational, say an assertive conversation where you are saying, this is why I'm feeling like this. You use this I statement instead mm. of, you're making me feel like this. Oh, you're saying, yes. I feel like this possibly because of my past, can you let me know why you're doing this so that I have more comfort? And that's where you, you address those red flags. But the red flags would be out of character things. Mm. The not, not coming home when they said they're coming home or suddenly no longer having their morning chats with you or whatever it is that you, your normal relationship ritual is. If something changes, that's a red flag. But if something else is going on that might be in the background of your mind from past traumas or learnt behaviors, that is something that just needs to be addressed yeah. and put to rest, and that trust needs to come in so you can trust that your partner is being honest and answering you properly. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. I suppose that's where the investment in, in marriage kind of changed the game for me, where it became there was an obligation to start working on the dynamics of our relationship, not just be, exist in complement to each other, yeah. but find a way to actually improve. And we've broken through some barriers, but it's been so hectic. Mm. It's so hectic to go to those places and not react. Yeah. I think my biggest issue from my own personal perspective is the fact that I get triggered and extremely triggered. How do we transcend that? If I'm being triggered while I want to talk to you about something that I know is going to trigger you, yeah. how do we take our hands off the triggers and just have a big conversation? Is there a practical way we can take ourselves out of that reactionary kind of mindset or space? When you say practical, I'm going to go practical. Okay. <clears throat> go for it. In a relationship, we are two individuals. Yeah. We need to look at this, as you just said, a marriage, a little bit like a contract yeah, between two individuals. Is, but that's what it is. In though. a business, yeah. would it run if we do not have meetings, if we do not have set aside time to focus on areas that need focus? R&D. <laughs> well, this is what has to happen in our relationships as well. Be as practical as what keeps a business afloat. Be as logical as what keeps money coming into a business yeah. as love coming into your relationship. Wow. Okay. Sit down once a month, once a week. Set that time aside. Make it a powwow, as we call it between <sighs> us. Yeah, I like it. Or a family meeting. Have a time that you sit down and actually say, you know, these are some of the challenges I'm facing this month. This is also an incredible time to actually bring up some of those things you are feeling scared to bring up. Mm. Maybe you've had to take a pay cut at work. Maybe you've been laid off. Mm -hmm. Those are huge things to discuss in a talk. relationship. Mm. I would say that's a bit of a huge talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can we bring that up? At dinner with the kids? Mm -hmm. At, in bed with my wife when we calm in bed? Or maybe if we have a time set aside where we're meant to have these very uncomfortable talks. I know that I can have that talk then, the and it will be yeah. respected. Creating that space. I love that. Wow. This is, I don't know if this is a power hour or a big talk. I feel like we had a pretty big talk. I think okay? there was a huge talk. It was like three parter as well. <laughs> it's the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but except it's relationships. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but, but on a very serious note, uh, Blythe and Christiane from Arise Wellness Center, thank you for joining us. Uh, you've Annoying. really, really given us practical tips. Uh, the last bit over there, Christiane, uh, that was wonderful. If you think about that communication, being intentional with those meetings, uh, I feel like you can have a proper state of the relationship address, which would be wonderful for both of you to share in that way. So thank you so much. Keep on sharing your partner. You'll be very, very surprised to know that they have things to share as well. So please keep it coming and continue sharing with us. You're in a relationship with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. Thank you, Mark.